Reversibility. It's an interesting concept. Wouldn't it be great if in life we knew we could go back and reverse something if we didn't like it or we changed our minds? It's, it's reassuring to know that sometimes you can reverse something. For example, if you buy something online, it's good to know you can return it. Wouldn't it be good if you could date someone and then go back and reverse it all if, if it didn't work out? It would save a lot of heartache. So today I'm going to talk about the reversibility of dermal fillers. Sometimes you might get a problem with a dermal filler, say a lump or asymmetry or even this aesthetic problem that you don't like and you want to reverse this filler. So how do you do this? We can do this by a reversal agent which is an enzyme that dissolves filler and it's called hyaluronidase. Hyaluronidase, it's a bit of a mouthful. The most commonly used dermal fillers nowadays are the hyaluronic acid fillers. Hyaluronic acid can be broken down by hyaluronidase. So hyaluronidase is actually the reversal agent for hyaluronic acid. It catalyzes the breakdown of hyaluronic acid. So firstly, hyaluronic acid is a natural constituent of our skin, our connective tissue, our nerve tissue, it's found in our joints, in our eyes, and it, it's a long sort of sugar chain or polysaccharide chain, and it's very hydrophilic, which means it loves water. It gives our skin its softness and uh, gives our joints its fluidity. In the body, we have a very rapid turnover of hyaluronic acid. So we have um, the constant production of hyaluronic acid as well as the constant breakdown or turnover through the body's own hyaluronidases. The turnover for hyaluronic acid in the body is, uh, for example, in the skin, it, it's really only a day or so. So, you know, we're getting, always getting new hyaluronic acid. And the difference between hyaluronic acid in the body and that which is found in dermal fillers is that dermal fillers have uh, cross-linking between the long sugar chains of hyaluronic acid. This makes it more resilient to break down by your own hyaluronidases, uh, which are inside your body. Um, so, you know, dermal fillers last a very long time. Cross-linking gives hyaluronic acid dermal fillers a, a fairly long you know, duration of effect. It also gives it a gel-like consistency, so it's able to, you know, lift uh, an area that you put it in. For example, if you put it in a cheek, it can lift your cheek or um, extend the chin out if you put it in the chin, for example. Interestingly, also sperm has a lot of hyaluronidase uh, in it because what it does with the hyaluronidase is that when it needs to get to the egg, it actually uses hyaluronidase to break down the corona radiata, which is a surrounding uh, a layer of the egg before it can get to the egg. So it uses that to break down this, this layer to get to the egg to fertilize it. So testicular tissue has a high amount of hyaluronidase. Naturally, um, this is where most of the commercially available hyaluronidase are derived from. They're derived from the testicular tissue of sheep or cows. So uh, probably that's too much information for you all. There is human derived hyaluronidase. However, it's actually not available in Australia yet. So in Australia, the most common commercial hyaluronidases are hyalase and also uh, compounded or you know from a special compounding pharmacy compounded hyaluronidases. Outside of cosmetic medicine hyaluronidases are used as a spreading agent because what they do is they break down the hyaluronic acid within the skin or the, uh, where it's injected and it helps uh, things like local anesthetic diffuse to a greater distance or diffuse more effectively. So it's commonly used when people have cataract surgery because what they need to do there is provide an injection uh, just under the eye to numb the eyeball before uh, they replace the lens. Often local anesthetic is mixed with hyaluronidase and this hyaluronidase actually helps the local anesthetic to spread by breaking down the uh, hyaluronic acid in the body. As I mentioned previously, the hyaluronic acid in the body has a very rapid turnover time, so uh, it's fine. It, the body regenerates its own hyaluronic acid, so there's no deficit um, from that perspective. So in the cosmetic world, hyaluronidases are used to break down hyaluronic acid that is in dermal fillers. And remember, these are cross-linked hyaluronic acids, the ones that are in dermal fillers, and they persist for a long time if they're left um, uh, alone uh, to wear out by themselves. 
The situations you may use hyaluronidase in include um, sort of misplaced dermal filler. For example, you know, maybe a filler was placed uh, too low in the cheek or too high and needs to be dissolved and re-injected. The other problems that we might see uh, which are common as say over injection, especially around thin areas of skin where um, hyaluronic acid uh, fillers can show. And often we see too much filler under the eye which needs to be taken back a little bit. So you can use hyaluronidase, take the filler back a bit and possibly re-inject um, the area again. You know, you might use it if there's asymmetry in a dermal filler application to correct say a lump in the lip, for example, if you, if a, dermal filler causes a little bit of lumping in the lips, you can use it for that. Hyaluronidase can also be used in a particular situation where you have superficial filler uh, just under the skin and this causes a blue-grey discoloration of the skin known as Tyndall's effect. Tyndall's effect basically uh, reflects light through scattering, especially the blue wavelengths of light, back to your eye. So what you see is blue. And also, it's a similar uh, reason why the sky is blue, because the sky actually um, sc scatters uh, the blue light back to your eye. So people don't like blue colored fillers, so what especially occurs around the eye. Hyaluronidase can be used to dissolve this superficial filler and remove this blue Tyndall's effect. An important and serious use of hyaluronidase is when you have infected filler or granuloma. So filler will basically act as a nidus for any infection. In other words, if you don't get rid of the filler, you will not get rid of the infection. Um, granuloma is basically a hard nodule caused by uh, uh, the body's reaction to the filler. Uh, it can often be related with uh, infection as well. So in both cases, the filler needs to be dissolved and hyaluronidase is the ideal way to do this. Now, it is important um, of note that you should be on antibiotics prior to dissolving the filler because you can imagine if you dissolve the filler uh, whilst it's infected, you're gonna be spreading that infection around as the hyaluronidase breaks down the filler and the hyaluronic acid. So it's important to be on antibiotics before dissolving infected filler. The really important use of hyaluronidase is actually for emergency situations. Now, this is a very rare occurrence that occurs with dermal fillers. And this is when a dermal filler can actually um, cause blockage of an artery. So we can't see the arteries when we're injecting dermal fillers. We don't inject them uh, under ultrasound guidance or, or radiographic guidance. We do it in a sense um, blind to all, you know, to all the um, arteries and veins in many ways. Knowing anatomy helps to not inject into arteries. However, if in the rare occurrence that this does happen, it's really important to have hyaluronidase days at hand. Now, you can tell when an artery has been occluded or partially occluded um, because you can see there's differences in the skin. It may um, become very blanched or white. It may become uh, mottled, uh, so it, it indicating a lack of blood supply. So, as soon as a physician recognizes these signs and they have hyaluronidase at hand, it is possible to inject the hyaluronidase into the area of ischemia or lack of um, blood supply. And this will help unblock the artery. A very important use of hyaluronidase. So we always have hyaluronidase at hand when we're injecting dermal fillers and uh, you know we have it always uh, ready to use just in case. An extremely rare situation where hyaluronidase would need to be used would be for when a dermal filler is injected into an artery and this artery feeds the eye. So actually we're actually blocking off the blood supply to the eyeball and the retina. This is a very, very rare uh, uh, extreme example. Um, there are probably only uh, 50 or so cases worldwide uh, where this has happened, but there is potential to actually reverse the filler that has been placed inadvertently into the artery that supplies the eye. If 
the patient, whilst having filler, complains of loss of vision in one eye, then it is possible to put in hyaluronidase in behind the eye to actually dissolve the filler there. Scary stuff. This is really scary. And thank God I've never had to do this ever. In fact, it's um, something that would be extremely difficult to do. It's not an easy technique. Um, anesthetists know how to do this really well, this technique really well, because they actually have to inject local anesthetic behind the eye, like I mentioned before, for the uh, eye blocks when they do cataract surgery. It's the same sort of um, technique. Certainly not something that you can easily get practice with. It is good also to have someone expert on hand like an ophthalmologist or anesthetist who knows how to administer the hyaluronidase um, in that exact location. So very difficult. Just as a side note, so it is important to inject the hyaluronidase into the area of ischemia and not necessarily the area where you've injected the filler. So for example, if you inject the filler, you know, in the nose uh, or on the side of the nose and the patient has blindness, um, in one eye, then you need to inject behind the eyeball, not in the nose. So um, that's uh, an important point there, probably more so for practitioners who do this procedure. So hyaluronidase, a very important emergency drug in cosmetic medicine, as well as a really good tool to adjust the placement of dermal filler so that it can be re-injected in the proper place. Of note, the amount of hyaluronidase to be injected to correct a certain lump or bump is extremely hard to judge and you know I've done hundreds and thousands of hyaluron days injections before still to this day I find it very hard to judge precisely how much hyaluron days to put in to dissolve a certain amount of filler unless you know the exact amount of filler in there and how the hyaluron days will interact with this specific amount it's impossible to know exactly how much to put in so most of the time it's an educated or calculated guess to combat this I um, always get my patients come back because there's always the risk of under or over dissolving. And uh, you know, usually people will tolerate under dissolving fairly well if it's a cosmetic issue. But if you over dissolve them, you know, people are simply not used to the fact that they are not filled to the extent they were previously. I've had a lot of patients who have dissolved, say fill around the eye and they, they ring up the next day in a panic saying, you know, it's too hollow. Um, the skin looks different, uh, looks wrinkly or crepey, they feel that's different. If I'm going to dissolve filler, I usually get my patients back in very quickly, often the next day. Alright, this is going to be an interesting little uh, demonstration in real time to show you the effect of hyaluronic days on um, hyaluronic acid fillers. So, firstly I'm going to put a blob of filler uh, just here. and another blob of filler just here. Okay, so now I'm going to put some hyaluronidase on top of one filler and let's see what the reaction is. it's really dissolving very, very quickly in real time. Just to make this experiment a little bit more um, so we can see the difference, let's put some saline here on this one. and there's a huge difference. The hyaluron days has almost completely flattened that blob of filler. Let's talk about the potential side effects of hyaluron days. As with most things, there are always side effects. One of the main concerns I have when injecting hyaluron days is the potential for allergy. 
and this can be a very serious allergy. It's not that common, it's rare, it might be something like one in a thousand, but uh, nonetheless it's a risk that um, is present and something that has to be in the forefront of your mind when you're injecting it. Often it's said that patients who have an allergy to bee sting have an allergy also to hyaluronidases, but uh, I haven't seen a correlation between this um, so much myself. It would also imply that there is something in a bee sting which is also present in hyaluronidase. If you're in a situation where, where you need to give hyaluronidase and there may be some doubt as to whether the patient is allergic or not to it, it's, it's possible to do a test in your forearm, for example. The practitioner might do a little test of hyaluronidase in the forearm wait some minutes, see if there's any reaction before injecting into the face. The dose you put in also might affect whether you get a reaction to it. So the greater the dose, the more potential there is for a reaction. So these can be you know, life-threatening reactions where your tongue swells, your face swells, and you need to go to a hospital to actually get adrenaline or you know, to have um, your airway looked at. So adrenaline actually has vasoconstrictive effect. It helps constrict the blood vessels uh, and helps reduce swelling uh, around the tongue and the mouth and helps regain um, the airway. Well, again, very scary stuff. Uh, this is turning out to be a very scary video. We always have adrenaline on hand at our clinics in case this happens. Now in the 12 years I've been injecting um, hyaluronidases, I have seen uh, one reaction and ha happened to be in a doctor. She didn't get much uh, in the way of airway problems, but she felt a bit sort of unwell. Her pulse rate started going up and her blood pressure started dropping a bit, so I gave her some adrenaline and that worked well and brought things back to normal. And we've also had one severe reaction in our practice where the patient had a significant dose of hyaluronidase uh, to dissolve filler. Their whole face blew up and they started to have tongue swelling. Thankfully, they were sent to hospital and uh, they received treatment there and everything was okay. Um, but this is sort of one case in thousands that have been treated at our clinic. So um, it's a very unusual reaction. So we always have adrenaline on hand at our clinics. Ironically, you have to have hyaluron days on hand when you do dermal fillers to prepare for that emergency situation where you get intra-arterial injection of dermal fillers and you also have to have some adrenaline ready just in case you get a reaction to the hyaluronidase. So I think it's essential that when you're doing dermal fillers you have both hyaluronidase and adrenaline on standby. I hope that's been an informative video for you all. It hopefully has given you some reassurance uh, to the fact that you can reverse dermal fillers which may give you more confidence to try them out yourself if you haven't done so already or more confidence to continue using them. Um, but on the other hand, you've got to think of, you know, the side effects and the potential risks as well. Uh, and I did outline some scary stuff to you, but uh, again, I want to reiterate, this is something that is rare, but you have to be prepared for. Um, okay, well, thank you again for watching.